John Lennon, president of Apple Records. I first met Ringo in 39, I think it was. We were in a bomb shelter together, pulling the weed out of John Wayne's hair. Neither one of us was to ever see him again. With Yoko Ono. I know you now for a thousand years. Your body still feels nice and warm to me. The sun is old, the winter's cold. The lake is shining like a drop of good as When the Beatles were, quote, making their records, and people always presumed that the, either George Martin or some man was solely responsible or not, or whatever. And when uh, each of us started producing our own records, or we took over our own recording sessions, people still couldn't believe that the artist could actually, uh, A, write the song and sing it, and possibly go in the studio and make it, too. And I went through, uh, and I'm sure many uh, musicians did, went through the same game, which is the mystique of the, this board here, which is nothing but a tape recorder with a lot of arms on it. And, you know, it's just a matter of telling the engineer what you want. It all comes down to the musician's ear. So when Yoko started doing it too, she got the same jazz on him also. So we'd come in at a session, and she knew what she wanted, whether it was just plain avant-garde or screaming or a pop song, she'd say to the engineer, uh, Charlie, give me more bass. And the engineer turned to me and say, what did you say, John? <laughs> I said, she said, give me more bass. This went on for two years. Oh, but it was worse in the beginning, you know, because uh, <laughs> when I stand in front of the mic and start to try to sing or something, all the engineers in the engineer room would just all go to the toilet or something, and suddenly there's nobody there, nobody. So, you know, it couldn't be recorded. I was always there. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs>